Texas A&M to part ways with Jimbo Fisher. Now, I know what you're thinking. You've agreed to a $76 million buyout, 19 million of which is due within 60 days. You are making a significant investment, so you definitely know who your next coach is going to be. No, they do not. That is not the case this time. When Texas A&M fired Kevin Sumlin in 2017, they knew they were hiring Jimbo Fisher. This is not that situation. Their idea was root out the dysfunction of the Jimbo Fisher era, and then they will go hire a coach. They feel like they have the money and the resources to hire just about anybody they want. That may or may not be true. We will find out. We know that a program that will guarantee a $95 million contract, 100%, that's going to be enticing to a lot of people. I've got 12 names for you. Most jobs, I would not have this many names. But Texas A&M, if they can afford Jimbo Fisher's buyout, they can afford almost anything. And so there's a lot of people who might want to listen. We will start with a name familiar to the Aggies, Mike Elko, the Duke head coach. He's working miracles. In Durham, Mer it's Duke, guys. He won nine games last year, six and three this year. They lost in, in double overtime to North Carolina last night. He's on his third quarterback. Like He is doing an incredible job at Duke. He did a great job as the defensive coordinator at Texas A&M. He worked at Notre Dame, Wake Forest before that. This is a guy who understands what is needed there, what is wanted there, and you've seen him be successful at a program with not anywhere near the resources. You know, I go back to the Duke Clemson season opener this year where uh, my friend Tom Luganville was the sideline reporter for ESPN, and he said, Duke looked as athletic as Clemson. Imagine what you could do with the recruiting power of Texas A&M in terms of athletes. And oh, by the way, Texas A&M already has some pretty good athletes, most of which would probably want to play for Mike Elko or would want to play for a lot of the names I have on this list. A guy whose name is going to come up a lot is Dan Lanning because the Oregon coach, his pedigree is perfect for this. He was the Georgia defensive coordinator when they won their first national title. Kirby Smart obviously helped train him. Nick Saban helped train him. He's also a Mike Norvell guy. He's on the Mike Norvell tree, worked for him at Memphis. Lanning has the right temperament, the right recruiting philosophy, everything. Here's what the problem is. $20 million buyout because Oregon's not playing around. After they lost Willie Taggart and Mario Cristobal in relatively quick succession, they made sure that the next guy was locked in there. $20 million bucks if you'd like to hire Dan Lanning. And here's the other part of that. Oregon is maybe a better job already than Texas A&M. And I know the Aggies don't want to hear this, but Oregon's going to the Big Ten. They already have an incredible roster. They're going to have a better roster now that they're going into a deeper, better conference that has a more national scope. They were already a national recruiting program. Now, is it easier to recruit in terms of local talent at Texas A&M than Oregon? Absolutely. But Oregon also has a very competent administration that has given the football program what it needs. It also has recent proof of concept. Oregon's played for the national title twice in the past 13 years. Texas A&M can't say that. You're going into the Big Ten where you're going to play Ohio State and Michigan, and if you are the best team or the second best team or the third best team in the Big Ten, you're in the playoff every year. So Lanning may be hard to get out of there, and Lanning has said over and over again that he, he plans to stay at Oregon. And remember, this is not a going home situation. That's what Willie Tiger and Mario Cristobal both were. They were going home to their home state of Florida. Lanning's from Missouri. Like, this is not that. So I wouldn't be shocked if, if he winds up staying there. Now, his mentor is Mike Norvell. And I know what you're saying. Well, why would they hire a Florida State coach after they just fired the guy they hired from Florida State? Mike Norvell and Jimbo Fisher, very different places in their careers. Mike Norvell has an undefeated team right now that he brought out of the ashes of what Jimbo Fisher left in Tallahassee and then Willie Taggart made worse. Florida State is incredible right now. The job Norvell has done in the transfer portal and then mixing that with the high school recruiting is probably the model almost everybody's going to follow 
as long as this is the the format. Now, why would he leave? Well, the same reason Florida State wants to leave its own conference. They're stuck in the ACC. They would rather be in the Big Ten or the SEC. So if an SEC school with tons of resources came along, if you're Mike Norvell, you have to listen. That doesn't mean you have to say yes, but you do at least have to listen because your school wants to get in the SEC. So why wouldn't you want to do that too? Another name, Kalen DeBoer, the Washington head coach. Now, Dan Lanning's a $20 million buyout. Kalen DeBoer is a $12 million buyout. The Washington folks knew that he was going to be a valuable commodity because he is a great coach. So Jen Cohen, who is now USC's athletic director, when she did that contract, put that $12 million buyout in. But here's the thing. I know Troy Dan and their new athletic director is working on a new deal for, for Kalen DeBoer. This is a really good job because it's in the Big Ten now. If, if Washington hadn't also landed in the Big Ten with Oregon and USC and UCLA, we'd be having a very different conversation about this job. But that is a really good job right now. So I don't know that that's one you want to leave. The other part with Kalen DeBoer, he might be getting interest from NFL teams this offseason. He is regarded as one of the better offensive tacticians in the sport. So if the Chargers want him to come work with Justin Herbert, that's something he's probably got to listen to as well. That might be a better ultimate goal for him. We, we don't know. It, it depends on what you want out of life. You know, this is a guy who came up through the NA, NAIA and – Again, the SEC recruiting environment is a different animal. The reason Lanning's so attractive, he already knows what that's like. Norvell, same thing. He's not worked in the SEC, but when you're at Florida State, you are recruiting against all SEC schools. But Kalen DeBoer is going to win wherever he is. That's certainly one to look at. Another guy who just wins wherever he is, Lance Leipold. The most amazing turnaround at Kansas. He got the Kansas job the last day of spring practice in 2021. That's when they fired Les Miles. They were horrendous. They were the worst program in the Power Five. They're a seven-win team this year. They went to a bowl game last year. Lance Leipold has done an incredible job, and not entirely through the transfer portal. A lot of it is making the guys he inherited believe and play well, and then recruiting guys out of high school and also mixing in some portal guys. This is a guy who won six Division Three national titles at Wisconsin Whitewater. He is a winner and he was going to be a, a valuable commodity. We've heard rumors about him in Michigan State. Kansas is going to try to back up the truck to keep him. Texas A&M can, out, can outbid both of those if that's who they decide they want. I'll throw another name at you. Another guy who just seems to win. Jonathan Smith at Oregon State. Now, this is the opposite of the DeBoer and Lanning situation because Jonathan Smith... Even though he's at his alma mater, normally when a guy is being successful at his alma mater, you think, okay, he's going to be much harder to get out of there. But because of what happened in conference realignment to Oregon State, this is one where if an SEC or Big Ten school comes along, Jonathan Smith has to listen to them. He's done a, a great job. They were 10-3 and three last season. They're 8-2 and two right now. They were not in good shape when Gary Anderson left. Jonathan Smith has rebuilt that program, turned it into a tough line of scrimmage team. Like that's what what that's what you'd want at Texas A&M. You would want someone who could take all that talent that you've amassed and organize it in a way that kicks people's ass. That's what Jonathan Smith has done at Oregon State with far less raw talent than Texas A&M will have at its disposal. I know I, I keep going to the ones in the Pac-12, but that that's, those are the places that are the most in flux. Now, Arizona's headed to the Big 12, but Jed Fish, their head coach, he's one that I, I wasn't sure what he was going to be as a head coach. He'd, he'd been a college coordinator. He'd been an NFL coordinator. You weren't sure what his guiding ethos is going to be as a head coach, but he has been incredible. The roster turnaround is probably as as drastic as what Deion Sanders has had to do at Colorado this year. What, what he took over after Kevin Sumlin was fired at Arizona was just a mess. And Jed Fish has reconstructed that roster through the transfer portal, but mostly through high school recruiting. Their class of 2022, I did an interview with, with Jed Fish on the show last week. Go watch that. 
listen to him talk about that class of 2022 and imagine instead of some four stars and then some really well-evaluated three stars, imagine it's some five stars and some really well-evaluated four stars because that's what you would get at a school like Texas A&M. Jed Fish is a really interesting name that an SEC school or a Big Ten school I think is going to scoop up at some point in the next year or so. Now, let's get into the Lone Star State. Jeff Trailer at UTSA, he's done a great job as the head roadrunner, but he was also a four-time Class 4A Texas State High School Coach of the Year. This is a guy who has the Lone Star State bona fides. He would be able to recruit locally. He would be beloved by the Texas high school coaches, and he's very well respected as a college coach. He's done a great job at UTSA. That's one of those where you you wonder, can he make the jump? Because it is a big jump. Now, some some from outside the current head coach ranks. I got Urban Meyer on this list because I know you're going to ask about him. This is the type of job I think he would take. The question is, would Urban Meyer be good in college football right now at a big program? Because Remember, when he left Ohio State, the rules were different. The system was different. Right now, the NIL era, player empowerment era, it's going to feel a lot more like it felt when he was the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Remember how that went? It didn't go very well. So I'm not sure that he's designed for this era of college football unless he is really willing to adapt. We've seen coaches adapt. We've seen Nick Saban adapt. We've seen Kirby Smart adapt. Could Urban Meyer do that? That would be up to him. But he might be more comfortable just staying at, at Fox if, if he doesn't feel like he could adapt to the new world of college football. I got one from the coordinator ranks. And this is a guy we actually saw as a head coach yesterday for Michigan. Sharon Moore, their offensive coordinator, offensive line coach. He's done a phenomenal job there. He was the acting head coach when Jim Harbaugh got suspended by the Big Ten. That's the one they turn to. If you ask people at Michigan, if Jim Harbaugh were to take an NFL job this offseason, who would you give the job to? They would want to give it to Sharon Moore. But the thing is, if Harbaugh winds up staying, and we don't know if that's going to happen. We know there's more NCAA, NCAA investigation to come. We know there's potentially more NCAA penalties to come. So we don't know if Harbaugh winds up staying at Michigan. We don't know if he gets an NFL job. He's been trying. He was obviously a very good NFL coach with the 49ers. But... If he's going to stay a little bit longer, Sharon Moore is ready to be a head coach right now. And he's a, he's a great recruiter, great developer of offensive linemen. And look, the SEC is a line of scrimmage league. You need people who can move other big people. That's what Sharon Moore does. He trains large people to move other large people really well. And I think as the head coach, that would be the, the foundational element of his program. My guess is he would also recruit very well on the defensive line and hire the right people to develop those people as well. And that is the only way you win in the SEC. The only way. Now, a couple pie in the sky potential names that I think would say no, but I think you have to ask. One is Dan Campbell. MCDC, baby. Detroit Lions head coach. Biting kneecaps. One of the hottest young coaches in the NFL. He's an Aggie. He played for Texas A&M. He's going to say no, probably. He's never coached in college. He also has a roster that is going to be competitive in the NFC for the next few years. If they can find a quarterback to succeed Jared Goff in the next year or two, they could be competitive for a long time. Dan Campbell's good at hiring staff. I don't think he's leaving, but he's an Aggie. You have to ask. One more from the NFL. And this is just a guy that when athletic directors ask me who I think would be a great college head coach, I throw this name out there because I know he would be. Dallas Cowboys defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. Now, he was very briefly in college football with Will Muschamp at Florida as Will Muschamp's defensive coordinator. He recruited, evaluated, recruited, signed multiple first-round draft picks in that brief period of time. His players loved him. He has the personality that would be incredible for a recruiter because – he can talk to the players in language that they appreciate and understand, but he can also connect with their parents. He's just one of those guys who's real all the time. But here's the problem. This is a man who's been an NFL head coach before, and he's probably in line to be an NFL head coach again real soon. But I still think you go ask because he would be a great college head coach. 
I know I've thrown a ton of names at you, but that's the thing about this Texas A&M job. They don't have a candidate in mind necessarily, and they have a ton of money to spend, even though they just gave Jimbo Fisher a ton of money. So let's see who winds up getting that next pile of cash from the Aggies.